So Anu's given us about five characteristics that we think are important in these settings. And if I can have the next slide, please. We'd like to hear from you. When we talk about fragile, violent conflict settings, what's the word that comes to your mind that will affect work on social accountability? So let's build a word cloud. Pull out your apps. You go to the poll and type in one word, please. It's, it's quite interesting that, that uh, mistrust emerged as quite a large, large theme. And that's really important because if you're working in a situation of mistrust, simply introducing a report card process or some sort of tool-based accountability isn't necessarily going to change that trust relationship. What kind of strategies do we then need to do in order to rebuild trust? It's interesting, someone, you've, you've, a number of you have raised impunity, which is not one that we had talked about. But this, this I think, it is a really important point. It links to work that Jonathan Fox has written about, is we have to have not just voice, but teeth. That is, people need to speak up, but there has to be some teeth behind the accountability mechanisms to go beyond the impunity of act corrupt and, and, and other kinds of actors. I think it's quite interesting here because there's also some things that we might see as more positive assets in these kinds of situations. Because we know if we go into these situations with totally a deficit-based approach, we're not gonna find, as Anu said, those things that are happening, which people are doing for themselves. So people here is very important. Um, a sense of, 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 of social justice, a sense of spontaneity, which can allow change to happen um, some sense of, of, of passion for change. All of these settings are, are embedded historically, and we need to understand the history in order to figure out how to make change happen. And in this program, we're actually doing five historical case studies.